Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to discuss compaction. It's interesting as we stand here at the edge of a field, and when we think about compacted areas of fields, this is where all the traffic comes into the field and goes out of the field, or everybody turns around at the end of the field, and there's oftentimes a lot of compaction at the end of the field. Now, if you're not familiar with that term compaction, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's that ground gets compacted or pressed down because of all that weight from the vehicles that are driving in the field, and then just the multiple passes that get made right over the edges of the field. So scientifically, what we're talking about here is soil density, and when we've squeezed out a lot of the air and moisture in some cases too, all there is left is soil and that's not a good thing because ideally as farmers what we're looking for here is about half soil, 25% water and 25% air. Well when we don't have that 25% air anymore it gets really difficult for roots to be growing in there and especially when that soil is pressed down so hard roots can't penetrate through very high soil densities. Now we've got a real problem out in our fields. Well there's a couple different problems there. Not only can crops not grow very well in those compacted areas but water doesn't infiltrate into those areas very well either. Many times when we have compacted areas at the ends of fields when we get heavy rains those rains Rains are forced to run off the field, oftentimes leading to erosion issues. Well, speaking of that, one of the things that can cause compaction is moisture. So if there's a lot of rain that keeps coming down on the ground and it doesn't have anywhere to go, then that can press that soil down as well. So one of the things farmers will do to improve this compaction is they will put tile drainage down below the ground. Part of the whole thing too is Farmers should never drive on wet soil. That's a rule that we learned as kids. Now, obviously, we don't live in a perfect world. Sometimes, as farmers, we have to go out in wetter conditions. But ideally, we don't like the soil wet. When the soil is wet, it can get compacted much easier. So again, if we have tile in the ground to lower the water table, we don't have so much water in the top two or three feet of soil, and we don't create quite as much compaction. Well, the other thing, Brian, you talked about rainfall hitting that soil and just pounding it. By leaving a little bit of crop residue on the soil surface, we can lessen the impact of those raindrops. Now, it doesn't seem like a big deal. You say, what are you talking about? I love walking out in the rain. That rain isn't hitting me that hard but it really does hit those tiny little soil particles pretty hard. So by leaving residue out like corn stalks or soybean stubble or wheat straw out in a field, now you have something to lessen the blow of that water and also when the water hits it doesn't splash up soil, it just hits off that residue and spreads out. The other thing farmers will do to try to reduce compaction over a long period of time is increase organic matter levels in soil. Farmers are able to do that by raising crops with lots of roots like corn and wheat and reducing their tillage going to things like like no-till or strip-till. So when they do that, over a long period of time, again, they will increase their organic matter level in soil, so the soil becomes almost like a sponge. So it can bounce back if there is a little bit of weight that does go on the soil with a tractor tire or with rainfall. So we want that sponge effect in the soil. Having high organic matter helps that soil to respond. Now, one other thing that farmers can do, uh, kind of in a natural sense, to reduce compaction is grow crops that have deep roots. And many times for farmers that are raising a crop like soybeans, for example, they may come back in after that soybean crop and plant a deep-rooted crop as a cover crop, just to pass the time over until the next time they're going to be planting another production crop on their farm, using a crop like, say, tillage radishes, where you're putting out a crop that has a big, strong root that's going to actually break through some of those compacted areas is a natural way for farmers to break through compaction without having to do the last option, heavy, deep tillage. Yeah, so what farmers will do to try to reduce compaction, and they can do this in the top few inches of soil, is this heavy tillage. Things like plowing, for example, or even chisel plowing. But what happens a lot of times is they will basically move the compaction layer down a little bit deeper in the soil. So what we've gone to on our farm is we'll use a practice we call zone building. We're going out with straight shanks that are deep, roughly 20 inches, and they're narrow. So all we're trying to do is cut slots in the soil to allow the roots to go down deep. We're not eliminating all compaction in soil. You can never eliminate it all, it seems like. And with that practice, we're able to have much deeper roots in all the crops that we raise. Well, farmers are busy out in their fields right now harvesting their crops, but one thing they're very concerned about is compacting the soil. That's where we actually 
have so much weight on the soil that it squishes out the air and that soil becomes much more dense. Farmers need to get that fixed in order to grow a great crop next year. Well, another thing they need to do to grow a great crop is stop our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show.